Guys, we've got two incredible speakers here with us today. Uh, the first is Kelvin Cochran. He is an accomplished author, public speaker, and former administrator to the United States Fire Administration, and he's also the former fire chief of the Atlanta De fire, fire Department. Um, we've got a video that's going to tell you a little bit more about him. You can check it out right now. Principles that I was taught as a kid, faith in God, education, respect authority, and treat other people like you want to be treated really fed my career success uh, and my life's success. Cochran was named to the highest post in the fire profession, U.S. Fire Administrator under President Obama. Breaking news from City Hall where the Atlanta mayor has terminated Fire Chief Calvin Cochran after a 34-year career. Despite being cleared of any discrimination by investigators, Chief Cochran was fired January 6th. To actually lose uh, my childhood dream come true profession uh, over uh, my faith, the very faith that caused me to get my job uh, ultimately has cost me my job. Good morning, President Jerry Falwell, Jr., faculty, staff, student body, and guests of Liberty University, I greet you on behalf of my church in Atlanta, the Elizabeth Baptist Church, and our pastor, Dr. Craig L. Oliver, Sr., and I greet you on behalf of the Cochran family. I want to talk to you this morning from a theme. Think about this as I share the blessings of sufferings, the blessings of sufferings. There's a scripture that I think will put what I will share in the proper context comes from the book of 1 Peter, chapter 4, verses 12 through 14. And in the King James Version, it says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when His glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the Spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified, the blessings of sufferings. There is an ongoing threat to freedom of religion and freedom of speech in our beloved United States of America. And as you just saw on the video, my story is just one of a growing list of many where a government entity and special interest groups have worked together to impose adverse action on another American for publicly proclaiming a position of faith based upon biblical truths that are not consistent with popular culture or the shifting pluralisms of political correctness. Americans today are having to make a choice as to whether they will live out their faith and keep their job or whether they will live out their faith or stay in business. It is becoming very risky to be openly Christian today in the United States of America. And as such, brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, students, faculty, staff of Liberty University, there is a significant need for the body of Christ to rise to unprecedented levels of unity and solidarity regarding religious liberty, the sanctity of life, biblical family, and biblical marriage in our country. Our divisions as the body of Christ along religious and secular standards have diluted our collective power and influence as the body of Christ, and that has got to change. As a firefighter, I've lived a very public life, but my life in public service went to unprecedented levels of publicity as a result of my 30-day suspension without pay the week of Thanksgiving 2014 and subsequent termination from employment after 34 years of faithful service in the fire and emergency services industry. Seven of those years served as fire chief of the city of Atlanta, where I still live in and love. And the adverse action against me came at the hands of the Honorable Mayor Kasim Reed, whom I still honor and respect in the Lord our God. These adverse actions were a result of a book that I wrote on my own time for a Christian men Bible study called Who Told You That You Were Naked? The question God asked Adam in the Garden of Eden. And the focus is men overcoming the stronghold of condemnation. As I began to reflect 
over what had happened in my life the week following my termination, brothers and sisters, I began to realize that God had been preparing me for this fiery trial my entire life. I came to the staunch realization that the Christian walk of faith is comprised of a series of level plains, mountain climbs, and valleys, and that sufferings are an inherent and necessary component of fulfilling God's purpose in our lives. Listen to me again. Sufferings are a necessary component of fulfilling God's purpose in our lives. When I was serving as fire chief in Shreveport, Louisiana, in the early 2000s, I began to experience a series of professional and personal challenges, so I sought God for answers to what I was going through, and God led me to do a word study on the word sufferings in the early 2000s. I searched the Old Testament and New Testament Scripture and found out that when we see words in Scripture like afflictions, trials, tribulation, tests, trouble, persecution, temptation, infirmities, and chastisement, all of those words fall under the primary heading of sufferings. And then I looked at men and women in Scripture who had experienced sufferings and saw quickly that sufferings fall primarily in two categories. There are self-inflicted sufferings and there are God-allowed sufferings. Going to college is a good example of self-inflicted sufferings. <laughs> Most of the sufferings out of those two categories that I experienced in my life fall in the self-inflicted suffering category. There are times in my life I was doing things that I knew God didn't want me to do, and because He's a loving God who has a tremendous destiny that's exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or think, He doesn't allow us to stay off track, and He uses sufferings to bring us back in alignment with His perfect will and plan for my life. Most of my self-inflicted sufferings came upon me when I was in college. And God brought me back in alignment with sufferings. Sufferings over the years in my life and our lives as believers have a way of stripping off bad habits and mannerisms, bad ways, bad relationships that will keep us from experiencing God's best and His destiny in our lives. And I've had my share of self-inflicted suffering, but God showed me early in this experience that I am not going through another self-inflicted suffering, that this is a God-allowed suffering, has nothing to do with me, but has everything to do with Him choosing me and what He's going to do in my life. This is not a self-inflicted suffering. It's important to be able to distinguish the, distinguish the, the difference between the two because those of us who have a track record of self-inflicted sufferings usually draw the conclusion when we're going through something that God is punishing me for something. I brought it on myself. God allows sufferings have nothing to do with punishment. It's just in alignment with God's Word that He searches over the whole earth looking for a heart that is fully His so that He may strongly show His support on their behalf. Everybody in this room today is going through some form of suffering, either self-inflicted or God-allowed. The shouting news for Christians is it doesn't matter what category of suffering you fall in, all sufferings are under the sovereign supervision of God, and He's going to work it together for our good and for His glory when it's all over, said, and done. So God said to me, you're in pretty good company. Job went through God-allowed sufferings. Esther went through God-allowed suffering. Joseph went through God-allowed suffering. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego went through God-allowed suffering. Daniel went through God-allowed suffering. Jesus Christ endured God-allowed sufferings. In all of those cases, God was glorified. And so I want to share with you five things that I believe God wants His sons and daughters to know. When you face your fiery trial, as it relates to whether you will stand for Christ or whether you will bow down to the culture and to political correctness, the first thing is God always prepares His sons and daughters for sufferings. He always does. You wouldn't be going through it if He had not prepared you for it. The second thing is, the toughest of the five, there are worldly consequences for standing on biblical truth. 
and standing for Christ. There are worldly consequences for standing on biblical truth and standing for Christ. The third thing is there are kingdom consequences for standing on biblical truth and standing for Christ, and the kingdom consequences are always, always, always greater than the worldly consequences. So let me give you some real-life examples. About two and a half, three years ago, there were 25 Christian men captured by ISIS, and they were given a threat, you got to reject Christ or we're going to cut your heads off. They refused to reject Christ, and their heads were cut off because there are worldly consequences for standing for Christ. A few months after that, in Afghanistan, Christian families were being sought in, a, in certain villages, and when they'd find a Christian family, they'd bring the whole family into a room. They tell the dad and mom, you've got to reject Jesus Christ or we're going to kill your children. There's not a single case where a Christian family in Afghanistan rejected Christ and their precious children were killed right in front of them because there are worldly consequences for standing on biblical truth and standing for Christ. A few months after that, in Northern Africa at a college campus, college campus, where Christian and Muslim students were known to attend. A radical group of Islamists stormed the college campus, separated the Muslim students from the Christian students, told the Christian students, you're all going to die. The only way you get to live is to reject, renounce your faith in Jesus Christ. 125 Christian college students refused to reject Christ, and they were gunned down on the spot because there are worldly consequences for standing on biblical truth and standing for Christ. In the United States of America, we're not close to facing those kinds of consequences unless, as the body of Christ, we remain divided, passive, and silent. If we remain divided, passive, and silent about religious liberty in the United States of America, our grandchildren and great-grandchildren could possibly one day live in an America where they can face those kinds of consequences because there are increasingly greater consequences for being openly Christian. But remember number three, the kingdom consequences are always greater than the worldly consequences. There are exceeding great and precious promises that God has made to His children if we have the courage and faith to stand. The fourth lesson is sufferings are always for the glory of God. Going back to number three, those worldly consequences, Job is a testimony he was restored twice as much as he had lost because he decided to have faith in God during his fiery trial. Joseph became the prime minister of Egypt because he decided to stand and be faithful during his fiery trials. Esther, the queen of the Medes and Persians, actually inherited the estate of Haman, the guy who concocted the genocide of the Jewish people. Mordecai, her cousin who raised her as a daughter, was actually made the prime minister of the Medes and Persians. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were made governors. Daniel was made a prime minister. Every case in the Scripture, Jesus now has the name above every name. Every time a believer stands, there are, there are kingdom consequences that are greater than the worldly consequences. Sufferings are always for the glory of God, number four. Remember what Nebuchadnezzar said? when he brought Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego out of the fiery furnace, unscathed, they didn't even smell like smoke, he said, no one can worship any other god but the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know what I've learned going through my fiery trial? That people in the Scripture and in real life today who have the courage and faith to stand will see a side of God that they would never get to see if they bow down to the popular culture of political correctness. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had faith in God all their life. It was their lineage. But they saw a side of God that they would have never seen had they bowed down with the rest of them. David, Dan Daniel saw a side of God that he would have never seen had he given in to the edict to not pray for 30 days. I was raised in the church, but I've seen a side of God that I would never have seen had I given in to the threat to either keep your job or resign or be terminated. The last thing is, for the child of God who stands and endures, their life will go 
exceeding abundantly above all they could ever ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Brothers and sisters, students, alumni, faculty, staff of Liberty University, this institution exists for the glory of God. It is preparing you to infiltrate the world for the glory of God, for the kingdom of God. Don't get it fixed in your head that you're just here to be employed by Christian organizations. You are not only here to be employed by Christian organizations, there's not enough Christian organizations to handle all of you that graduates from this institution. God is equipping you for the marketplace, for government, so that His glory and His love can be shared throughout every aspect of this earthly realm that we live in called the planet Earth. When you see my circumstances, I want you to be clear. First of all, you'll hear the rest of the story tonight because God prepares us in three distinct ways. He prepares us through our childhood upbringing, He prepares us through our family, and He prepares us through our careers. But I want you to understand something, those of you who will not be able to come back for the session this afternoon. My back is not against the wall. I am not at the end of my rope, and throwing in the towel is not an option. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. God bless you, Liberty University.